Hello friends, myself Pratik. In this session, we are going to discuss the concept of linked list. Let us start this session. Linked list is the second most used data structure after array. A linked list is considered as a linear data structure in which elements are not stored in a contiguous memory locations. Actually, in linked list, every element is stored as a separate object. And these elements are known as node. And every node has two parts, one is data and link. These links in the nodes help us to connect all these nodes all together. It facilitates traversal of nodes from start to end. In order to understand the concept of linked list in more detail, let's first consider this situation. Here we want to store list of numbers by using some data structure. Now we have two options. One is to use array and second is to use linked list. First, we are going to implement this through array. So in this case, we have to store these four integer values in an array. Let's suppose the first value is stored at memory location 1000. We are assuming that every integer of data type is taking four bytes. So the second data item will be stored at 1004, third will be at 1008 and fourth will be at 1012. So these four items will be stored in consecutive memory location. An array is simply considered as sequential representation of list. While in case of linked list, the area is assigned by memory heap. Memory heap assigns some random areas in memory to store these data values. As shown here, in order to store these four values, four random memory location are assigned by memory heap and these values are let's suppose 1000, 2000, 3000 and 4000. And in these memory locations, we have stored our data. Now it's very important to make connections between these memory locations so that we can traverse the list from start to end. In order to achieve this, every node has address part where we are storing the address of the next node. So in this case, the address of the next data item is 2000. So we are storing here 2000. In case of second node, the address of the next node is 3000. So we are storing address here. So these address help us to make connections between these different nodes and this way they act as the pointer and facilitate the traversal of list from start to end. But the question appears from where we get the starting address. To achieve the starting address we have a concept of head node where we store our starting address. So in this case the starting address is 1000. So from the head node we get the starting address and then we can traverse the data from start to end. Here the last node is considered as the tail node and its address part carry null because there is no next node to this tail node. So this is the way the data is stored in linked list while in case of array the data is simply stored in contiguous memory locations as a sequential list. I hope that this gives you a clear idea about the differences between linked list and array. Now let us discuss the types of linked list. We have three types of linked list. These are singly linked list, doubly linked list and circular linked list. The linked list which we have discussed so far is actually a implementation of singly linked list. Here we can navigate the data in forward direction only. By starting from head node, we can traverse the data from first node to our tail node. While in case of doubly linked list, in every node we have three parts. In case of doubly linked list, both forward and backward navigation is possible. And this is achieved by having three parts in node. You can see node has two address part and one data part. So every node point to the address of previous node. It also points to the address of next node while the third part is the data which is used to represent the data present in the current node. In case of header node, the address of previous node is null because this is the first node and in case of tail node, the address of next node is null because this is the last node. And due to storage of these previous and next node address, the forward and backward navigation is possible in case of doubly linked list. The circular linked list is similar to singly linked list. The only difference is that the last element is linked to the first element. So in case of last element in a single linked list, we have null in the address part. But here, instead of storing null, we are storing the address of the head part. So this facilitate the traversal of the linked list in a circular fashion. 
and this is considered as circular linked list. Now let us quickly discuss the basic operations performed over linked list. We can insert any node in the beginning of linked list. Let's suppose this is our original linked list and we want to insert a new node here. So by modifying the pointers of head node and to the address of new node, we can easily insert a new node in the beginning of a linked list. We can also insert a node at the end of linked list. So let's suppose this is the new node which we want to insert. By modifying the pointer of earlier last node, we can easily insert a new node in the end. Even we can insert a new node at a given position. So here we are inserting this node at this position. For this, we need to modify the pointer of previous node and the pointer of new node. And this way we can insert a new node after any given node in the linked list. We can also delete a node from the beginning of linked list as illustrated here. Here we are modifying the address of head node. Earlier it was pointing to first node but now it is pointing to the second node and this way we can remove a node from the beginning of linked list. We can also remove the node from the end of linked list by simply modifying the pointer of our second last node. Earlier it was pointing to the last node but, but in this case it will be updated to null. So this way we can delete the last node from the linked list. We can also delete any particular node from the linked list by modifying appropriate pointers. So this way we can perform all basic operations on the linked list. In next session we will discuss how to perform all these operations in Java by using linked list class. And we will be doing this in our next session. Thanks for watching this video.